Hello guys, welcome back to my world of fragrance. I am so excited for today's video that I'm almost nervous. I just wanna do this topic justice. The poisons, I'm finally tackling the poisons after wanting to do this video for a couple years now. And actually more than that, before I even had this YouTube channel, I've always been infatuated by the poisons. The poison line is pretty much like perfume Zodiac. If you tell me what your favorite poison is, I can tell something about you, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things, if you consider yourself a perfume geek, you absolutely need to know your poisons. So here we go. I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently and start from the latest release in the poison line, which is Poison Girl. This was released in 2016 and I thought that the poison line was complete until this was released. Sometimes you just need to leave the perfumes as they are. It's fine, we don't need to have 100 flankers of everything. But y'all decided to cater to a younger audience with this release. So it had been quite a few years before their previous release in this line, because like I said, it seemed like crickets, <laughs> you know, the poison line was complete. But lo and behold, we had Poison Girl. So Poison Girl, Personally, uh, is probably my least favorite of the Poison line because it is just so detached from the rest. The rest seem to have a very strong character, whereas this one is very much a generic perfume that, like I said, was supposed to cater to this younger audience. So what this perfume is meant to smell like is almonds and vanilla and that, uh, that sweet, swirly, girly potion that uh, a lot of the current teenage market really enjoys. So I'm not going to dwell too much on it. Let's move on to the next. Now the previous poison had been released nearly a decade prior and this is one that was quite uh, short-lived because it had already been discontinued by the time the poison girl had been released and it uh, it goes down as one of those shameful discontinuations for a lot of perfume freaks. So it is Midnight Poison, and it is one that I purchased once it had come out. I was just infatuated by the whole uh, aura of this perfume, what was portrayed. Eva Green was the face of this fragrance, and I saw the ad, and I had just read an interview with her in Vogue, and I was completely just enamored by the way that she matched the campaign so well. I work in marketing, so this is something that I am passionate about and I enjoy. And so it had this very bewitching blue, dark midnight color and Eva Green just looked so uh, enchanting. I was just really enchanted, but it was like a dark witch that was at the same time good. And this is essentially a patchouli rose fragrance. There are patchouli rose fragrances out there that I think could be on par with this fragrance. I'm not gonna say that this is the greatest patchouli rose of all time, but there is something about a perfume being discontinued that makes people want it even more. <laughs> so I am holding on to my bottle of it. Midnight Poison is one of those perfumes that I have found both men and women enjoy. So real collectors, uh, also male ones, enjoy this perfume because it is that non-sweet rose patchouli with mossiness and a little bit of warm amberiness to it as well. It's a really nice nighttime fragrance and I enjoyed wearing this for evenings out back in the day when I was in my Midnight Poison era and just spraying it now brings me back to those memories. I do feel that the dry down of it becomes warm as well and inviting in some way but this is the edgy poison. If we're gonna talk about personalities and stuff. Poison Girl is the Gen Z <laughs> of the Poison line. This is the edgy poison from the OG line. So, yeah. I will definitely say that if you're looking for something similar that isn't discontinued, L by YSL is pretty similar. If you're looking for something maybe a little bit even more edgy, Au Capital by Diptyque is actually a really nice option where it's kind of amped up, that rose and patchouli. Then we have Pure Poison, which was released in 2004, and just as the bottle indicates, this is the white floral bouquet, powdery, madami, rich auntie <laughs> type of fragrance in the line. I do find that Pure Poison is the cleanest smelling out of this line, so it is that musky, white gardenia, orange blossom, jasmine, powder puff, and it wears really beautifully in cooler weather for me personally. I find that that 
white musky dry down really smells amazing in snowy weather i kind of feel like snow white and i think that it's worth mentioning for a lot of people that the sillage of these ones at least the original line <laughs> is actually a really beautiful sillage they wear wonderfully around you at least from my experience i found that they wear beautifully the next poison is hypnotic poison and this was released in 1998 the beautiful red bottle this is probably the most sold poison it definitely is the most popular like when i hear people talk about the poisons it's usually the hypnotic poison that they gravitate towards and it's no surprise this is a very come hither cuddly almondy vanilla but um can come across a little bit play-doughy, at least the old formulation did. It's just so delicious. Out of the gourmand fragrances that are out on the market today in the commercial space, I definitely really like Hypnotic Poison and recommend this one. It has these little nuances that make it more than you can just put your finger on it and be like, oh, that smells like carrot cake, or oh, that smells like toffee. You know, it's not so straightforward. It's something that can smell slightly different on different people. Around this time, some news came out that men were attracted to vanilla and women. So <laughs> then vanilla fragrances were released and they have been released in abundance ever since um, because it, it has that, that comfort appeal that I think that a lot of gentlemen enjoy smelling on their partner or whatever, you know. I'm not into all of these rules, but I think that that definitely is a part of that appeal and Poison Girl, which was the latest release, kind of wanted to build on to that hypnotic poison and success with the warm vanilla and the almond. So yeah, nice one. So four years prior to Hypnotic Poison's release, we had Tendre Poison, Tender Poison in 1994. And this is one of the two poisons that, rest in peace now, discontinued. This is a green fragrance and green fragrances often do not do well commercially. I personally am a lover of green fragrances. I find them stunning, but this one did not last. I have sadly never gotten the chance to smell Tender Poison, but it is heavily compared to Cabotine by Gré, which I have. So white floral and green, but I hear that Tender Poison was even greener. My friend on Instagram, I'll leave her Instagram details here, has some beautiful vintage perfumes and she has reported that it is still greener than Cabotine. It is an orange blossom freesia tuberose bouquet and yes, that's all I can say, but it's gone, it's discontinued and you would have to search the vintage markets to find this one, so, but it still needed a mention, of course. And now rewind to 1985 and we have the original Poison, the scandalous release so different to Dior's previous releases in perfumery. They would uh, normally focus on the prim and proper Dior lady with a lady Dior, well done hair and all of that. And all of the fragrances were named Dior, Diorissimo and um, were green and floral. And come the 80s, Dior decides to completely pivot and release something on the market that's gonna say boom and compete with the other fragrances that are supposed to, you know, fill a room and people can wear out to nightclubs. And so Poison was created and this name is no coincidence because this literally is Poison in a Bottle. I'm not trying to be cliche or anything, but it is like a smack in the face. And the first time that I smelled this, I will say the opening of the fragrance appalled me. I was not intrigued in the slightest. I was actually repelled, but waited for the dry down. And this was on card, actually, the dry down on card. And I was just searching everything, my, you know, my purse, looking through everything to try to find the scent. And lo and behold, it was of poison. So I was sold from that moment on. It was my very first try of poison, actually. And going back to the whole perfume Zodiac thing, this tells me something about you. If you can pull off poison, you are the bold, you are the, the classic as well. You like the classic, um, but you don't care too much about what other people think. Because when I wear poison, I know that I'm going to maybe drive off some people and that's okay. Then they're not people for me, you know what I mean? So. If you are a person who maybe thinks that you do not like tuberose 
and you do like poison, then you have a chance to someday enjoy tuberose because there is a beautiful silky tuberose uh, thread throughout poison. It's plummy, so it's a plummy fragrance, very dark, screechy at first, but then then you have that, oh, that jazz music playing. I get a jasmine and sandalwood and amber and this, uh, yeah, just lots, lots and lots of things going on in Poison. Hence the status, hence the name, not for everyone. Definitely not, probably not. <laughs> if you are a Poison girl, there is a huge jump from that to this and vice versa. So polarizing on each end of the spectrum, but you must respect the original always, whether you like it or not. And yeah, that is my take on Poison. I could actually tell you guys so many incidences where fragrances have actually like had an impact with like deeper meaning in my life. Like Poison is one of those perfumes. I had a guy actually think I was like his long lost love from <laughs> a previous life because he found my bottle of Poison. And this was like, I, I just have so many encounters where perfume and coincidence have kind of met. There have been signs, okay? So I wear my poison uh, mainly knowing that I will be the only person enjoying it in the room pro probably unless I meet another person who enjoys their poison. So you tell me which poison are you? What is your poison? I would love to know down below in the comments and i will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching and being on this crazy ride with me and i will see you in my next review